Ladies and gentlemen, it's your boy Rico back at it again. Ready to hit you guys with a something, something, something new, something, something different. Actually, nah, it's a lie because we're less than one week away from the 2018 NFL Draft and I am geeked. You guys should be geeked too because this is going to shape, <laughs> it's going to shape our off season. It's going to shape our season for some years to come. And the key word that comes to mind is epic. Epic. And I say epic because it could go two ways. Epic failure. You know what I'm saying? Or it's an epic season. We had an amazing offseason and we did things the right way. We drafted our guy and we drafted some key pieces in the draft. And now we are on our way to having 11 and 5 seasons for years to come. That would be ideal. But we are sitting in a situation that is perplexing. We're sitting in a situation that got people scratching their heads a little bit. Because the real question is to stay or not to stay. That is the question. And y'all probably you probably already know what I'm talking about. Are we staying at 12? Are we moving up? And the reason this is this question comes to mind more so now than weeks prior it's because your boy tried to do a mock draft i'm not really into mock drafts man i got several that i started doing the last couple days and i found it very difficult to try to to, to find my spot you know what i mean to take the guy i realistically think that the bills will actually draft everyone in their mama knows i love lamar jackson but he's not number one. he's not my number one quarterback baker mayfield is and let's keep it real. Everybody keeps talking about this, the big six. The big six. Yes, there is the big six. But a true number, if you guys if you guys want to call it that way, is the big three. And the big three, based on what the media is talking about, and based on what is presented in front of us. It's Josh Rosen, Sam Darnold, Baker Mayfield, Asterix, Lamar Jackson. But he's a whole different ball game. He's his, he's in his own category that people are too afraid and too bitched to try to talk and try to touch. They're too soft. They're too fearful of trying to, you know what I mean, place him up there. They know he's just as talented as the guys that are being, you know what I mean, glorified and at the top of the list. But he's just such an unknown. I already made a video about it of him being the unknown. And nobody knows anything. They know he's talented, but they don't want to touch it. So we're going to put him aside for now. But he's he's like a 1A, right? But for the conventional passer that the Bills are looking for, let's keep it real, Lamar Jackson isn't that guy. Conventional passer. So let's go back to the conventional passer. So the big three, Mayfield, Rosen, Darnold. Let's keep it real. Josh Allen, tier two, tier three, tier four. All right? So here's the deal. I started going through, you know what I'm saying, first pick, second pick, who's going to go third, who's going to go fourth, and... The way I simulated and, and went through draft simulators and so on and so forth, Darnold consensus was going one. They switched it up with Allen, but I highly doubt it. So Allen was going later on, but Darnold was number one, Rosen was number two, and Saquon was number two. It always battled up between the two of them, right? So let's just keep it real. Darnold, Rosen, Mayfield, gone in the first three. Now it leaves us at 12. Who do we pick at 12, right? There's going to be one of those quarterbacks that's not going to be taken, right? Allen is going to be left at 12. Do you take a Josh Allen at 12, knowing all his deficiencies, knowing his one or two strengths that he's got? The one that's the most glaring is a strong arm, but I don't give a damn how strong your arm is. But if you can't hit anything in stride, you're poo-poo to us. He's no different from Cardell Jones. And I was an advocate of Cardell Jones, but I learned my lesson. You can't be getting on the hype train for a guy that's got a strong arm, but can't hit nothing but air. So I'm not making that mistake again to go with a guy like Josh Allen, because Josh Allen pretty much is Cardell Jones. Let's keep it real. The only difference is the pigmentation, right? One's got a little more melanin than the other. Let's keep it real. Anyway, moving on. So which brings me to the 12th pick. In the 2018 NFL Draft, the Buffalo Bills select Marcus Davenport. 
because that's the route I want to take. If we can't get our quarterback between Baker, Sam, or Rosen, you got to go defense. And let me explain to you why. I'm not trying to string this damn video along because I'm going to touch on the first three picks that we got we got hit on. Let's go four. I'm going to touch on the first four picks that we got hit on. Not anything, anybody specific, but what route we should take. Here's the deal. If, in fact, we cannot get a trade partner, that's number one. We got to get a trade partner. We got to get someone to chat chat with. Who's going to dance with us, right? You know what I'm saying? Who's going to dance with us? If nobody's dancing with us, we sticking at 12. I'm sorry, but that's exactly what's happening. That is why we brought AJ McCarron. That is why we have a guy in Nate Peterman. There's going to be a battle regardless in camp. But we need that third quarterback. So, when you can't get your consensus number one guy in the draft, right? What's the, what's the thing that they say? Then you go after your best player available. So, what one position on defense would you go after? For me, I'm going after someone in the trenches. The games are won in the trenches. That's how it's won. You got a solid old line, you can make things happen. Look at the success Dallas Cowboys had. They had that old line and had my man DeMarco Murray running for 1,800 yards. You know what I mean? So, let's keep it real. When you have a solid old line, you have the time to do what you need and what you want. Secondly, D-line. If you get after that quarterback, you can single-handedly change the game. You now have to have somebody double-teaming whoever is on that line to keep him away from your quarterback, which should then open up the passages for everybody else. We did a great thing by signing Star Latulale. <clears throat> we bring in Star Latulale. He's going to eat up space. He's going to allow others to eat. You know what I'm saying? So why not bring in Marcus Davenport, a freakish, runs a 4-6-40. You know what I'm saying? On the line, can stand up, can get in the dirt. He's more accustomed to standing up. But you don't think that we're versatile on defense enough that we can allow him to stand up? I'm just saying. You bring in a guy like Marcus Davenport that comes in and disrupts every quarterback that tries to throw, a pocket passer in Joe Flacco, a pocket passer in Tom Brady, we collapse the interior and allow our dogs on the ends to eat? You bring in a Marcus Davenport. You change the damn culture by bringing in a guy that can run and get after the damn quarterback and can set the edge. I'm sorry I'm excited, but the draft is around the corner, and that's what we got to do. In the 2018 NFL Draft, 22nd pick, the Buffalo Bills select Lamar Jackson, quarterback, Louisville Cardinals. Think about it for a second. We draft a Lamar Jackson at 22. That's a value pick. Because you will gain someone that can make plays regardless. The, the analysts, the guys that watch film, the coaches on the other side of the ball have all said it. When he's on the field, he is the best on the field, bar none. Let me let me explain something to you. Mike Vick, everybody's saying he's comparable to Mike Vick. Absolutely. We haven't seen a freakish athlete like Mike Vick since Mike Vick. So let's keep it real. You get a guy like Lamar Jackson, the Buffalo, and he's like a Mike Vick. Let's bring it back. Mike Vick came into the league and took everybody by, everybody by storm. Everybody knew what to expect with Mike Vick, right? Then he had, a, he had a coach in Dan Reeves that didn't quite know how to deal with him, right? Dan Reeves gets fired because they're just not good enough. In comes Mora. Mora tailors that offense to Mike Vick. Mike Vick starts getting steam, right? And then boom, he goes to jail for that bullshit that he did with the dogs. Time goes on. He comes back into the league and he gets with a guy that knows how to tailor his skill set to his offense in Andy Reid. Did you see the success that Mike Vick had? He had one of his better seasons, better career seasons with Andy Reid that knows how to tailor the athlete, the quarterback, and his scheme and pair them and make it work. And he had one of his best seasons ever. Now, Louisville's quarterback in Lamar Jackson is, in Michael Vick's words, five times better and comes from a pro offense, a pro style offense at Louisville. You allow him to go into a spread offense and actually have an easier offense to deal with and you don't think he'll have success? Boy, you better stop. Lamar Jackson can make a lot of noise in Buffalo. People will have to respect his arm. They'll have to respect that arm. 
either have to respect his legs, but he's a willing passer, and that's what makes the difference. Lamar Jackson, number 22. Shit, I'm on a roll. In the second round, we got two picks in the second round. Guess, guess what? Dante Pettis. Grab a little bit of Dante Pettis and put him on that team, right? We need a linebacker. We need a linebacker. Who do you think I'm going to grab? We need a sideline to sideline linebacker. So now we got quarterback. We got defensive end in Davenport at linebacker. We already have Milano that's that's took that's taking the spot of middle linebacker. We can keep Milano at middle and take a Shaquem Griffin. 438 speed that can run sideline to sideline. Yes, he's got one arm. Who gives a damn, man? Can you make plays? Can you cover? Are you fearless to go after the damn running back when he's jetting to the sideline? Yeah, you know I mean, can you tackle? Yes, he can. For those four picks, I'm just gonna I'm gonna dead it right there. First four picks. The Buffalo Bills select Davenport, Marcus Davenport, Louisville Cardinals, Lamar Jackson, receiver extraordinaire, route running machine, and return man in Dante Pettis. And last but not least, Shaquille Griffin. Those four picks are very doable. That shapes our defense, that shapes our offense, and we keep it rolling. What do y'all think about that? That's just one, that's just, that's just off the top of the head. Mock draft. That's how much I do them. I don't do them often. I could be taking an L right now, or I could be opening some eyes right now and making y'all realize that we can, have, we can make things happen. We have an offensive coordinator that just came from college that can cater his offense to his quarterback. He's done it. He's done it at the NFL level. He's done it at the collegiate level. We have a quarterback that's only played in a pro-style offense. Man, you, you make the offense easier for him and make it a spread offense, game over. They will not stop Buffalo if we have that one-two punch with Lamar Jackson. We got Kelvin Benjamin to the side. Dante Pettis to the other side. Zay Jones in the middle. You know what I'm saying? Come on, y'all. Get with me now. On defense, Davenport on the edge causing havoc. Jerry Hughes on the other side. Star the Tulele just eating up everything. Kyle Williams going, going nuts. Shaquem Griffin, sideline to sideline. Ladies and gentlemen. Think about it. We are less than a week away from draft time. Get ready. Get ready, y'all. It's your boy. And I'm gone.